Hey everyone, in this video we're actually going to be stepping away from Unity just for a little bit uh, because now that we have our little music event set up, we need something to test it with because we're about to start building the uh, music player. We want to actually create the different tracks for our music. I'm not going to walk through like in depth how to create the tracks for the music. I think that's a different kind of tutorial, but at the very least I want to show you how you could do this because it's really going to depend on what software you want to use. And for the tracks that I've created just for testing, I'm going to also provide examples, tracks of the layers. Like I'm going to include that with the, um, the GitHub project. So if you don't want to create it, that's fine. Like you can just use them for testing, but I, I do recommend that if you've never done it before, just to just open up a simple, you know, MIDI thing and put in some notes and just make something simple. Like this is not gonna be very complex and I'll show you what I have here. But essentially what I want to do is I want to have a song that has a beats per minute and I want different layers that I can turn on and off because really I want to export each of these layers separately. So for example, we may have a drum beat, right? R really simple, um, almost template default stuff. But then we may have a bass, and then we can take both of these. And what our tool is going to do is it's just going to have access to each of the layers individually, but we're just going to turn them both on. So we'll do this. And then we'll turn this on. We'll actually fade it in at uh, gameplay time. And then we'll have other layers that we can turn on as well. All right, and then we can turn them on and off while it's playing. And that's really what we want to do. So for you all, I you know I just recommend trying to find whatever player or uh, DAW you want to use. I, I recommend FL Studio. I recommend Reaper. Both are very good and very affordable. That's a good starting point. If you don't want to pay for anything, you can look at, I think it's called Bosca Sea Oil or something. I haven't used this in a while. So this, maybe it's a resource for you. Maybe it's not, uh, but you can find some tutorials on it. Um, there's lots of other things out there. I really recommend just something like FL Studio or Reaper. You just have more options later on and it's, it's worth the time to learn, I think. You know, once you put that together, you have a song, you you have the different layers. I've combined both the songs for testing and into one, just so you can hear the second one that we'll use with the different layers or just visualize that. Right, it's the same thing. We're just gonna use them both for um, additive blending. So that is doing the layers additively. Now, another thing that we wanna do is we want to be able to blend layers that are totally isolated. So in this example, um, I'm, I'm making an album for a game and uh, we may have different layers. So I think the one I was using was this one. This is self-contained, like it's a self-contained track, but all three of these tracks are the same beats per minute and they have the same sections in them. I lost a lot of files recently when I, my computer <laughs> uh, fried, um, probably due to the Texas ice storm stuff. But uh, if you open up each of these files, like you'll hear this is a totally separate thing. Right, like that's a self-contained thing. Uh, the second track is self-contained. And they're lined up so that if th it's using different instruments and they're different tracks, but we can blend from one to the other because the sections are similar and we can uh, dynamically fade in. And this last one is more like full instrumentation. With these three tracks, our other method of blending, we want uh, one separate, second separate, third separate. Basically, you're you know you'll create a complete song, then you'll create another complete song, and you'll export these out together and these out together. But you know this could be a variation on this, and 
uh, just in the end, you have tracks that are lined up and you know self-contained. So that's the other method of blending. Just wanted to kind of speak to that a little bit. So if you're able to put together simple examples for both of those types, like one where the one song where the different layers are individual and the other where this song and this song are both lined up, then that's all you need for testing. And then we'll, once you have that and you can listen to them, then export those and uh, we'll, we'll bring those into Unity. Also, we will need sound effects for testing our sound system later on. So I figure let's, you know, let's just do that, do that here. So um, one website for prototype sounds that I like a lot is called Chiptone. If you go there, all that is, well, if you go here, I guess, it's basically an end browser, just simple sound generator. Like you can click some starting points. Right, like you can tell they're pretty lo-fi and um, simple, but that's fine because we, all we need is we just need really small file sizes for testing functionality. We're not doing the sound design yet, we're building the tool and then we can do the sound design later. So with this tool, I would just make a couple different sounds or, you know, another tool if it, or if you want to do this inside of like Reaper or something, you can or Pro Tools or whatever. Just make some sounds. Once I get one that I like, I can take that and I can save, save it out as a WAV file. When it comes to waves and mp3s basically it depends on how the song is used you can't really go wrong with wave files like that's the standard uh, unity will let you play mp3s but they're not good for looping songs for example uh, for sound effects they can be okay but if you can handle the space uh, waves are going to be your best bet once you get some sound effects and you get your music layers, you get uh, one example where you can make different tracks, right? Like just put in some drum stuff and uh, make simple notes on a you know, little side song generator thing. Uh, when, once you get an example of individual layer tracks and you get another example of full track, full track that are synchronized, you export those and you bring them into Unity and that's where we'll go next. And one more thing that I've been bad about because I just keep forgetting, um, because we're set up in version control and because I wanna you know, give you some assets that you can use for testing if you're not able to create your own audio clips, but I hope, I hope you give it a shot. Inside of version control, anytime you complete some kind of change that is substantial in any way, I do recommend just making a checkpoint for yourself and just to remind you all of how that works, um, I'm using Git Kraken, but whatever Git client you're using or if you're using command line or whatever, just make sure that you make a checkpoint for yourself by um, staging all changes, making the commit, giving it a title, saying imported audio assets or something, created and imported um, music and sound files or just whatever you need. And I'm gonna commit these locally and then I'm gonna take my local changes and push them up into the remote. And notice that I have Unity closed. Um, a lot of times it doesn't matter, but you never know. It's best to keep that closed just in case. And if you give it a second, because we're importing some WAV files, it may take a little bit. Don't try to import tons and tons and tons of WAV files and to get, because it's not meant to hold large uh, art files. So um, we may need a more complicated system if it, you know, we have a lot of huge audio assets. But anyways, once you push that up, you will see it inside of your Git repository, which is pretty cool because that way you can grab it from another machine and pull it down. And let me just show you now that we have pushed those commits up. If if you wanted to download my project at this point, um, or just the, it's probably the final version or whatever, uh, you could just always come over here, code and download zip, and you can open it up and you can grab the music files and import it into your own uh, scene, but just to show you, like, you can see all the changes we've made so far. Sound system, here's some music you can grab, uh, here's some prototype sounds, and, and so forth. So if, if you want to grab mine, that's fine, uh, or you can create your own. I Either way, that's fine, but I recommend you at least give it a shot to create your own. So anyways, just want to show you that, how version control fits into it. I'm probably not going to show the steps of making future commits. Uh, but, you know, I do recommend as you're working on this to make a, you know, make a commit, push it to your repo and work that way because now you're saving your changes and, and then anytime you want to go and grab that old uh, system or tool that you're working on, just go to your GitHub repo and pull it down and you don't have to worry about finding it on an old machine or whatever. So anyways, that's, that's version control. That's how we 
make progress there. And uh, from here on out, I'm just going to focus on the tools. So get, get the assets if you need them. So uh, once you get your files exported, then we just need to import them into Unity, you know, however you need to do that. Uh, this is just a mix of various prototype sounds, and I'm going to group those inside of a folder. I'm just going to call this prototype sounds. And this way, if we put them all under a folder, we can delete them out later if we're done testing or or if we're just going to keep them there for further testing, we can isolate that a little bit. So I'm just going to put that in there. Make another folder for prototype music. And let's make a few. I think I have three different ones. So let's say song one, song two, song three. So I have three songs that we're going to mess with, then just import the tracks and put them in the associate folders so that we don't get them confused. Uh, naming convention, just do whatever makes sense, but try to make it clear that if you have several layers that they're labeled with a particular song. So then drag those in. Song two. And this last one is going to be our individual tracks. And I think I actually need to relabel these. You also notice that um, I'm using MP3s in some of these. That's just to save space on, on like a GitHub repository. You should usually use a WAV file for uh, music if you can. So I'm going to relabel some of these just to clean up. And now that we have our prototype music and our prototype sounds, we can start you know customizing this stuff which is really what we want, right? We don't have any functionality yet. We just want the ability to be able to come in here and say, okay, this music event is gonna have a percussion, a bass, and a melody or something. And then now we can start building our, our music player so that we can test and make sure that these are actually playing because we know that if we open these up or if we press the play button or whatever, Right. Well, like we know that the tracks are lined up. We just need to play them in the game. So yeah, now that we have everything for uh, testing, so all of our audio files, and we can actually start building our system.